Well, today's a very exciting day because it's new calculator day. It's arrived. Oddly, it says Texas Instruments on the box, because where I bought it from, I've obviously just put it in some box to ship the thing. But if we look inside it, we'll find I've got ooh, my new 15C, my HP 15C. This is the collector's edition because they don't make the original anymore, but that's OK. It's still better than nothing. I've been pining for one of these since I first saw a 15C. Oh, when was that? 2017, 2016, something like that. So eight, seven, eight years. Maybe that's not that long. Let's move the camera a bit closer. Uh, this, of course, the original HP 15C was released around 1981, I think. Maybe 1982, around 1981. And it's... Uh, very, very advanced calculator indeed. Very nice calculator. I originally saw a university professor was using one when they came to visit my school to give a lecture. And I fell in love with the thing, but couldn't get hold of it. And now they've released a limited, well, they released a limited edition one, which I didn't manage to get hold of, but they've released a collector's edition, which apparently fixes some of the bugs that the limited edition one introduced. But why are we still using calculators? In a world where we've got smartphone apps. And I've got my preferred smartphone app. Let's just get something so I can open the box. My preferred smartphone app is the RealCalc app. Uh, because it does a very, very good job of, um, of RPN, reverse Polish notation. So in a world where everyone has a calculator on their smartphone, why on earth would we bother with physical calculators? Well, there's something about the keyboard, the tactility if that's the word, of the keyboard that you just can't beat. So I'm going to crack this open. Now, I know it's a collector's edition, but I've read on the online forums that these are shipped with the batteries inside them. And if you're ever going to... You know, there's a little symbol down there to warn you of that. And if you're ever going to store things as a collector that are electronic, you make sure you take the batteries out because they will leak eventually. And when they leak, they will destroy... They will destroy your calculator or anything else that's around them. Yeah, so two CR2032 batteries. They are included, and I've heard that they are installed into the calculator. So even if I wasn't going to use this, I would have to open it up to remove the calculator and to remove the battery so I could safely store it. But I am going to use this because it's a toy. And if Toy Story taught us nothing, uh, then it taught us that toys should be played with. Right, I'm going to move the camera angle a bit. So that's pointing down at my desk in an awkward way. Um, should I try and peel this sticker off the top? No, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll just cut it. It doesn't really matter. I'm not going to put this as a collector's thing. I'm just going to cut it using this sharp pin. So let's just... Ooh, breaking the seal. There we go. That's now being cut open at the top. Let's open it up. Anticipation. Things I want to check. I want to check the keyboard is okay. Quite a few people on the online forums have reported that the keyboard isn't as good as they wish it was. So I do want to check the keyboard. I mean, given that the reason why people like me still like using physical calculators, why the app just will not do, is because we want that tactile feedback. We want to feel when we press the keys. So if that feeling isn't quite right, or if the keys don't register sometimes, which has also been reported, then that is a problem. That's a nice display case. That is nice. I'm going to keep that box. But that is nice. Solid card. Just making sure I'm making sure the calculator doesn't fall out while I turn it over. That is a nice display case. Let's open it up. You know, I might take this film off there because that cheapens it, I think. There we go. That looks a bit nicer in its display case. Oh, look at it. Happy Valentine's Day to me. Right, so HP 15C Collector's Edition. I'll throw that bit away. I'm not that much of a collector that I'm going to keep every little bit of plastic. Or maybe I am. Right, so this slides out. Fine. Oh, but a manual. Yes, we've got a manual. Let's uh, just take the manual. Oh, it's a big manual. Look at that. HP were always famous for making good quality man. Oh, it's in colour. That's got some blue in there. And you can see there's a reddish colour there as well. 
It's not just a fully printed manual, it's a fully printed manual in colour. With the original artwork that is in the original manual. It's a shame it's not uh, ring bound so that you can lay it flat. That'd be better. What was that? Working with matrices, I think I just saw. Numerical integration. What else have we got? Finding the roots of an equation. Oh, there it is. Calculating with matrices and so on. A full instruction manual with test programs that you can run. It's fully key press uh, programmable, printed in the Philippines. This is edition three from January 2023. Well, it's, when I'm recording this, it's February 2024. So this is a year out of date already or something. It'll never go out of date. And things haven't changed since the 1980s. Things have not changed. Here's the main event, though. Just going to double check there's nothing else behind it. Oh, there is some paperwork behind. What's this? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Ah, so the back of the calculator. The original had black with gold printing. They've gone with a metallic style inlay with some sort of black printing on it, which I suspect is going to wear off. It doesn't feel very metallic, actually. I think it's just metallic coated plastic. That's a bit of a shame. What was this? Collector's Edition serial number 8... Oh, 6818. 6818. There we go. Battery compartment is sh uh, screwed shut. I won't turn it on just yet. There's... Uh, doesn't appear to be any sort of film protecting the screen. Or any sort of film protecting the keyboard. Some of the other people I've talked to said there was and they peeled that off. This doesn't appear to have that. So hopefully this isn't a return. And if it is a return, hopefully it's not a return that someone's done because of the um, keyboard issue that I was talking about. What have we got in here? We've got... Oh, they slide out from the side. We've got our... Do, 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 do. Where's the English bit on there? I'm blind. I can't see English on there. I guess that's not the English one then. Oh, wait, wait, it's more. Where's the English one on there? Can't see English on there. Maybe that's not the English one then. Let's have another look. Yeah. Oh, where's the English one then? Well, I assume this is just... It's got uh, Avis Legal. I'm going to use my keen linguistic skills to say that's a legal notice of some sort and i suspect this is just the warranty information well, how odd where's the english one gr that's greece I'm not being blind am i there's no english warranty information maybe they're supposed to be and if this is a return which is going to upset me a bit uh, that bit was taken out how peculiar. Or maybe it's in the English manual anyway. I don't know. I'll look it up later. This is our fake leather cover. Oh, it's very, very flexible. Oh, very, very flexible. Let me just compare that to a different one. Yeah, let's compare that to this one here. So this is an original HP 12C. And you can see the leather case is much more rigid. Doesn't have that um, texture on it. I mean, I suspect this is genuine leather. I don't know. I could look it up, which would make me being a vegan uncomfortable. This is fake leather, uh, vegan friendly, but it is very flexible. Uh, so that's my 12C. Oh, with the 12C, you notice on the back, that's what I'm talking about, the gold print. That's what was on the original. Uh, what else have I got? Uh, this calculator was bought for me as a present by uh, my old form group. This is a, a 12C Platinum Edition. And um, it's turned, I've got the batteries taken out, so it's not gonna turn on. That's where they went for the plate on the back, which is what we've got on the new 12, uh, sorry, the new 15C. Obviously it says something different because the calculators do different things, but yeah, this doesn't have a, um, this doesn't have a screw fastening this one shut. 
whereas this one does. But this case is really rigid. I'm tempted to use this case actually with my 12C just because of how much more rigid this case is. We'll see if this fits in okay. Should do, they're all the same form factor. Yeah, that fits in there quite nicely. And then, uh huh, trying to get the thing out might be a challenge now. There we go. So I, I, I prefer this case, the case that came with the Platinum Edition. So I might mix and match a tiny bit here. Yeah, I might mix and match a tiny bit. Um, I mean, I'm comparing it to this one here. This is the Swiss Micros DM41L, which is the same style as the, all the Swiss Micros clones. Again, I've taken the batteries out of this one, printed on this, um, I think it's titanium, probably not in the larger ones. Serial number 881. Um, but this this is a nice cut. I really like this calculator, actually. But even then, the case is a lot more rigid. A lot more rigid. So that's interesting. Anyway, I guess it's time to turn the thing on and give the keyboard a test drive. That's what I'm interested in. I'm not going to do this video where I'm going to show you all the different features it has. It's going to give the keyboard a test drive. So let's reposition the camera again. Right, that's probably about as... Uh, Sensible as we're going to do it. Let's turn the thing on. Oh, there it is. There's seven segment displays with dots. Let's change the display mode. There we go. So they've now put it into what they call scientific notation. Standard form. That's a bit better. Right, let's uh, type some numbers. Yeah, no problem. Enter key works quite nicely from the top or the bottom. Plus one. Let's clear that. Come on. Who's RPN? So, five, enter, six times. Push. There we are. Nine, subtract. There we are, so that's 21, 8 plus, 29, or divide, 7.25. Nice. Pi, there it is. So that's, keyboard seems okay at the moment. The feel of the keyboard is very similar to the others. Let me get some of the others. Let's get my... Swiss Micros. In fact, let's get all of this style. I'm not using the credit card size Swiss Micros because that would be an unfair comparison. I think. Right, so let's start by comparing. Let's move those out of the way. Let's compare the keyboard uh, between these two. Okay, so things I've noticed, the 12C is a bit more rounded, it feels a little bit softer, the click is less pronounced on the 12C, remember this is a very old 12C, so this will have been well used, the keys will probably be rounded off. The interesting thing they used to do is they would do uh, moulding so that these letters and numbers all the way through the key, so you cannot wear them off, no matter how many times you press them. Oops, not the microphone. Uh, you cannot wear those off. They're not printed on top of the keys, they're moulded all the way through. I don't think that's going to be the case here. I think these might be able to wear off. And it feels... It's hard to describe. This feels a bit squidgier than this. You can probably hear a difference. Uh, is that actually leather or is that rocking? No, that's not rocking. I thought it was rocking as I was pressing it. So then the table might not be level. All right, let's compare it to the, the newer 12C, Platinum 12C. So those keys. Oh, interesting. 
very similar. I think it's a bit lighter on the 12, uh, sorry, on the 15C, a bit lighter than the 12C Platinum. And then the key shape is different for the Swiss Micros clone. The key shape is a bit more squared. These feel much stiffer than the HP ones. The HP ones, these are nice and light, give a nice tactile click when you press them. Now, will it miss any key presses? Let's find out. Let's just press each key as lightly as I can. Okay. I'm removing my finger the moment I feel it click. That's encouraging. Let's try the zero. Oh, we can't have two decimal points, come on. That's... Yeah, I think that's pretty good, actually. So add that to zero. I get that, yeah, subtract it. Get that. Times I should get zero. And divide zero. So it seems to, the moment the key is depressed and clicks, you can feel it give, it, is just, it does seem to be registering these keys. Let's try the enter. Yeah. I can't get the enter to register without the click. So that's pretty good. How about the, how about the minus, the backspace? No, that's pretty good. No sort of key misses there. Right, try sign. Okay. Try cosine. Yeah, that's fine. Let's try tan. Let's try tan again. Very, very gently. Did that press it twice? I have it bounced. Let's try again. Just rocking my rocking my finger on it and trying to do it so that it doesn't click back up again. Yeah, it's not clicking back up again, and it did definitely bounce. The tan key bounced. Ooh, that's not so good. Four, tan. Let's just. Really matter what I do, doesn't really matter. Yeah, all right. Fighting with me, I know. So let's do 90, let's do 10. No, that's not going to work, is it? Let's try 85, let's do 10. Try again, 85, let's do 10. But this time I'm going to press the button. And then I'm not going to fully release it. I'm just going to lift it very slowly. I'm using both hands to support my finger. So, you know, I'm really pushing this to its limit. Uh, that's the point where it's triggering and then it clicks off. I wonder what happens with sine as cosine as well. No, not the let's try let's try fifty. Let's try it with cosine as well. Release it very slowly. I can't get it to do it with cosine, but tan it does. So the tan key is bouncing, but only just. Let's try reciprocal key. Let's try pressing it so that it's Oh, interesting. Right, let's try that again. Reciprocal key. Will it register before it clicks? No, but will it register if I now just gently rock my finger without letting it click off? Let's try again. Just, just before it clicks off, it does re-register. So maybe a little bit of bouncing there as well. So, okay, the keys aren't perfect, 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 but given that you're going to be pressing it like that, I'm pretty happy. I mean, I don't, I don't think I'm going to press 60 cosine and think it's doing it twice, or 60 tan and think it's doing it twice. I don't think that's going to happen. Let's try it again. 60 tan, 60 tan, 60 tan, 60 tan. I could do this 100 times. I'd, well, if I hit the buttons. 
I don't think it's going to bounce. I don't think it's going to do it twice. That one looked like it did. E looked like it did. Let's try that again. I'm barely rocking that. I mean, I just basically held that down. I think that E key is a little unreliable. It doesn't register before it clicks, but it might register two clicks if you're a little bit too slow with it. Yeah, look. And that, uh, that wasn't clicking in between. You can hear that. There's the click, and then... Just very gently adjusting the pressure, and it's registering those as clicks. Mm. 100 square root. So that's 10. Same thing there, look. I'm just trembling my finger without it actually... That time, let's try 100 like that. Just gently, gently rock my finger. And, and okay, clicked the last time. It didn't click the other times. So some of these, these keys look okay. I think, let's try. No, you could do the same thing on that. So I think we are going to have to watch out for bouncing when we type our keys. Should stick some batteries in the old. 12C to see if that behaves in exactly the same way because I might be doing a disservice to the 15C. I can't see a situation where I'm typing a number and I'm holding it down and wiggling my finger around. I can't see that happening actually. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm not going to complain. I think it's actually a nice keyboard to type on. It feels good to type on this keyboard, which is why you get a physical calculator still rather than just using a mobile phone. Um, a little bit concerned that it didn't have a plastic layer on the keys because other people I've um, communicated with on the various fan forums for HP said it does, and on the screen as well. This one doesn't seem to have that, so it might be a return, which would be a shame, but the condition of it looks very good. Yeah, it's going to... Uh... Program mode. Doesn't look like there's anything coded in it. So that's 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 encouraging. So I haven't got any programs left in it. Which might have if someone has used it before. Anyway, very, very powerful calculator. Not the most powerful calculator in the world, okay. It's I mean it's not a DM forty two, but it's a bit of history that they re released for nerds like me. And I'm so glad they did. Um, let's just uh, turn the damn thing off. Let's just press the off button. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm happy with that. More to follow. I'm probably going to do some videos about how to use this calculator to do various different functions at some point. Because do you know what? Why not? There are some people out there that are going to get a real thrill out of this calculator. I know I am looking forward to using this tomorrow in school. I'm going to go start studying up on the manual now because I've forgotten how most of these functions work. I hope you've enjoyed this video.